Hey, it's me, MLB. Here is chapter 20 of Why You, Why Me, titled A Chat with Bakugo. You walked into his room and saw the burn marks still on the wall where you had detonated his quirk for the first time and didn't know how to control it. You laughed. It's still there, you said, pointing to the charred wall. Yeah, what the frick happened? He asked, stopping dangerously close behind you and taking a hold of your hip slightly. You inhaled sharply at his proximity and your focus wavered. Uh, I, um, you pointed to your hand. This. He bent his head down and let his lips trace along the back of your neck, running from where your neck joins your shoulder up to your hairline. You froze. Your heart started beating wildly and your mouth went dry as a tingly sensation shot through your core. Wow, his touch has an amazing command of my body, you thought. His hand slid slowly up your sides as he kissed you lightly on the back of the neck again, opening his mouth slightly to take a small amount of skin between his teeth and tugging on it gently. You stifled a moan. Where the heck did that come from, you thought. Your body seemed to be responding on its own and you turned around to face your man, his brilliant red eyes locking onto yours and he growled lowly as his hand snaked behind your back and pulled you into him. You could feel his heart thumping in his chest as he held you against him, his breath coming in short bursts against your cheek. I need you, he whispered carnally as he stared at you with a ferocious longing. Whoa, Bakugo- Katsuki, call me Katsuki, he said, reaching down and picking you up under your thighs and hoisting your legs up so that they could wrap around his torso. You squealed in surprise at his swift manoeuvre and marvelled at his strength as you wrapped your arms around his neck pulling his head into your chest. He buried his face into your cleavage and inhaled deeply. You giggled. Baku, I mean, sorry, Katsuki, are you okay? You asked him, fondly tussling his hair with one hand as you smiled down at him. No, he said sharply. Your face fell. What's wrong? You asked as he marched to his bed and plopped you down, maintaining his position as he hovered over you. I... He looked away and clenched his jaw. I feel like I want you more than you want me. You tilted your head curiously. Well, yeah, it does kind of feel that way, doesn't it? I can't get you off my mind, he said directly, still averting his eyes. You're all I think about. I just want to touch you, hold you, but I feel like I'm always the one making the moves and it's frustrating. He hung his head and buried it into your neck. Well, Katsuki, to be honest, I've only really just got my memory back. So although I do remember everything about us, I still feel a little distant, you said, running your fingers through his hair as he relaxed his body on top of yours, one of his legs between yours. He lay quietly on top of you as you continued to caress his hair, letting your other hand trace down his back to his backside and back up again. I don't even know your favourite colour, you said suddenly. Orange, he mumbled into your neck. It's orange. You hummed in acknowledgement and then let silence fall once again. Now you ask me my favourite colour, he said softly. Ugh, he grunted, lifting his head to look into your eyes again. I'm not good with all this fluffy stuff. What's your favourite colour? It's red, you smirked. He grinned mischievously. Oh, so you are attracted to me then, he leered. You giggled. Katsuki, I'm definitely attracted to you, no doubt about that. But I feel like we need to get to know each other on a different level than what we know now. How much more do we need to know about each other, he said in exasperation. I've had your goddamn period for you, isn't that close enough? You let out a belly laugh. Oh god, the message you left me when you had been in my body and you got my period for the first time. You roared laughing again. It was hilarious. No, it wasn't hilarious, he growled. I got it at school and accused the guy who sits behind you in class of putting paint on the seat. I even punched him in the face. You cackled again. Okay, well, yeah, I know we're close like that, but we haven't even gone on a proper date yet or had a deep and meaningful chat or even talked about things that we like and dislike. Yeah, I know the basics about you, but only enough to get by on a day-to-day -day basis, you said. Bakugo scowled. Not much for the romantic stuff, he said, staring deeply into your eyes. Well, that much is obvious, he said with a playful smile. But if you really do like me, you'd be interested in knowing everything you can about me, right? He rolled his eyes. Yeah, I guess. Hey, look, you don't have to. I'm just giving you ideas on how to make me feel closer to you so that the relationship feels more level, you said, bopping him on the nose with a finger. So you'll start initiating more then? He asked with a coy smile. 
I think that can be arranged, you said in a provocative tone, pushing him off and running to his wardrobe to grab one of his hoodies that had become your favourite. You pulled it on and spun around to face him, flicking the hoodie up over your head and adopting his usual scowl. He watched you with amusement as he lounged back on the bed with one arm propping his head up. Oi, you growled in your best Bakugo voice. Why the hell are you just lying there looking at me? Sit up when I'm talking to you. He sneered and sat up, spreading his legs a little as he slid to the side of the bed and rested back on his arms. That's better, you snarled, shoving your hands in, the po- in your pockets and marching over to him. Oh, I think I like this version of Yin, he said suggestively as you grabbed him sharply on the chin and forced his face up so that he was looking at you as you placed one knee between his legs on the bed and leaned over him. Is this initiative enough for you, you damn extra? You growled lowly, narrowing your eyes at him. Go Yin, go! There ends chapter 20. Stay tuned for chapter 21.